So, Kyle Korver, an NBA player who currently plays for the Utah Jazz, recently published a long op-ed titled Privileged, in which he discusses how he benefits from the white privilege in the NBA and generally discusses the current race relations in the United States. And it's exactly what you could expect from a rich white liberal celebrity from California. Basically, it was just yet another white man feeling ashamed for his skin color, blaming white men for all the inequalities in America and how basically all white people are to blame for all the wrong things that have happened in the world. In the op-ed, he discusses one incident where he talks of his own embarrassment when he sort of blamed Tabo Cefalosa, a black player whom he knew, for being injured during an arrest in 2015. The second incident happened last month when Oklahoma City Thunder player Russell Westbrook got in a verbal tussle with a jazz fan during a game. Westbrook claimed the fan yelled racial epithets at him. The incident struck a nerve with our team, Corver claimed. These incidents, Corver said, made him begin thinking about blame and responsibility and the upshot of his rumination is that he blames all white people. And somehow, because of this incident that happened to another rich African-American who plays basketball for a living and makes way more money than your average white guy in America, can't even imagine, because of this incident, because of some random average white guy allegedly said something racist to Russell Westbrook. That's the reason for Corver to question the blame all white people in America carry. Just complete nonsense. He continued, How can I, as a white man, part of this systemic problem, become part of the solution when it comes to racism in my workplace, in my community, in this country? Corver asked. But the thing is that this isn't a systematic problem. Black people in America don't have to face many racist obstacles that they had in the past. America isn't a racist country. It evolved over time. America had an African-American president. Why would a racist country vote for a black politician? And not to mention that Kyle Corver plays in the basketball league that is dominated by black men, who make millions of dollars every year for playing basketball. And that is yet another proof why America isn't a racist country. Why would a country, racist at its core, where systematic racism is prevalent, allow such a thing to happen? It's just complete nonsense. Nothing that we shouldn't expect from the people on the left, blaming all the problems in the world on white people, even though they currently live in the freest and richest society ever in history. But Corver still insists that racism is still a huge problem in America that should be solved immediately. I have to to support leaders who see racial justice as fundamental, something that's at the heart of nearly every major issue in our country today, and I have to support policies that do the same. I have to do my best to recognize when to get out of the way in order to amplify the voices of marginalized groups that are so often lost. Then, even if this wasn't enough, Corver went to blame all white men everywhere in America for racism, and he also accuses white people responsible for all wrongful acts in the past. Two concepts that I've been thinking about a lot lately are guilt and responsibility. When it comes to racism in America, I think that guilt and responsibility tend to be seen as more or less the same thing. But I'm beginning to understand how there's a real difference. As white people, are we guilty for the sins of our forefathers? No, I don't think so. But are we responsible for them? Yes. Yes, I believe we are. I know that, as a white man, I have to hold my fellow white men accountable, he wrote. We all have to hold each other accountable. And we all have to be accountable, period. Not just for our own actions, but also for the ways that our inaction can create a safe space for toxic behavior. Corver added, and this is just completely insane. He's saying that white people in America are somehow responsible for all the wrongdoings their ancestors did in the past? Why should they? If they listen to people like Kyle Corver or any other members of the modern left, you may think that America and Western civilization in general is a country and concept built on racism and suffering of people of color. But that's not true. Americans shouldn't feel guilty about their ancestors. They should feel proud for what they achieved and for what they created, which is the greatest and most prosperous civilization in human history. And of course, Corver in his op-ed endorses a radical leftist group, Black Lives Matter. It's about responsibility. It's about understanding that when we've said the word equality for generations, what we've really meant is equality for a certain group of people. It's about understanding that when we've said the word inequality for generations, what we've really meant is slavery and its aftermath, which is still being felt to this day. It's about understanding on a fundamental level that black people and white people, they still have it different in America. And those differences come from an ugly history, not some random divide. And it's about understanding that Black Lives Matter and movements like it matter. Because, well, let's face it, I probably would have been safe on the street that one night in New York, and Tabo wasn't. And I was safe on the court that one night in Utah, and Russell wasn't. LeBron James praised Corver for his bashing of white privilege on Twitter, saying this, Salute my brother means a lot, and like you said, I hope people listen. Just open your ears and listen. And it's not just LeBron James who was a Hillary supporter in 2016 that praised Corver for his op-ed. <laughs> 
much of you guys would love to hear from me, I'd much rather love to hear from our next president, Mr. Hillary He was also a bunch of other liberal celebrities, but that shouldn't be surprising at this point. We're going to talk about a letter from Kyle Korver, who's an NBA player, all about accepting his white privilege. And we'll talk about what's right and what's wrong in the letter, because I think there's some actual interesting complexity to the letter. First, you have to go over to dailywire.com and subscribe. For $9.99 a month, you can subscribe over at dailywire.com. When you do, you get the rest of this show live. You get two additional hours every afternoon of my show live, which is pretty great. I mean, we have terrific guests on all the time senators, governors, experts on the issues, members of, of, of electoral body, like all sorts of, of great people coming on the show routinely. And you get my analysis for two more hours a day, which is, let me just say, top notch. You get all of those things for $9.99 a month or for $99 a year, you get all of that plus this, the greatest in beverage vessels, the leftist years, hot or cold tumbler. You get access to our Sunday special a day early. You get extra material from the Sunday special behind the paywall. You get to ask questions in the conversation and sometimes during the radio show breaks. All sorts of good stuff when you go and subscribe. Also, please subscribe over at YouTube or iTunes. When you do, you get a lot of great material. Also, please leave us a review. We always appreciate it. We're the largest, fastest growing conservative podcast and radio show in the nation. <laughs> Alrighty, so meanwhile, there's there's this article that is getting all sorts of play about a uh, by a forward named Kyle Korver who plays for the Utah Jazz, pretty good three point shooter, and it's all about how he is privileged. He wrote it for the Players Tribune, which is this publication. I'm, is it LeBron James's publication? I'm trying to remember whose publication it is. In any case, is it Derek Jeter? I, I can't remember. In any case, the the Players Tribune is a place where a lot of professional athletes write about their thoughts. Kyle Korver has this piece that is being widely distributed and shown as this is an example of how white people should act on the issue of race. And so I think it's worthwhile going through it because there's some stuff here that's meritorious and there is some stuff here that is really not. That's an overread of the situation and creates a standard that is unfulfillable. So here's what Kyle Korver writes. He says, when the police break your teammate's leg, you'd think it would wake you up a little. When they arrest him on a New York street, throw him in jail for the night and leave him with a season ending injury, you'd think it would sink in. You'd think you know there was more to the story. You'd think, but nope. I still remember my reaction when I first heard what had happened to Thabo. This is his teammate. Uh, I'm trying to remember the, the teammate's name is Thabo Cephalakis, I can't, I, I believe. It was, it was 2015, late in the season. Thabo and I were teammates on the Hawks, and we'd flown into New York late after a game in Atlanta. When I woke up the next morning, our group, our team group text was going nuts. Details were still hazy, but guys were saying Thabo hurt his leg during an arrest. Wait, he spent the night in jail? Everyone was pretty upset and confused. Well, almost everyone. My response was different. I'm embarrassed to admit it, which is why I want to share it with you today. He said that they were friends, and he talked about how they had hung out a lot. He said that when he found out that Thabo had been arrested, his first reaction was, what was Thabo doing out at a club on a back-to-back? Not how's he doing, not what happened during the arrest, not something seems off with the story, nothing like that. Before I knew the full story, before I'd even had a chance to talk to Thabo, I sort of blamed Thabo. I thought, well, if I'd been in Thabo's shoes out at a club late at night, the police wouldn't have arrested me, not unless I was doing something wrong. Cringe. It's not like it was a conscious thought. It was pure reflex, the first thing to pop into my head, and I was worried about him, no doubt, but still, cringe. It turns out that Thabo ended up settling with the city of New York and the NYPD. He got like a $4 million settlement. It fell away from the news. Thabo had surgery and went back through rehab, but he couldn't shake his discomfort because his first reaction was, what was he doing out at a club on a back-to-back? Well, first of all, that's a legit question. Like, why was he out at a club? Why was your other teammate also out at a club on a back-to-back? These two things are not mutually exclusive. You shouldn't be out at a club on a back-to-back, presumably. Also, there are racist police officers who sometimes do racist things, which it appears is what happened in this case, although the police actually tried to prosecute this player and suggested he resisted arrest. And it is unclear from all the surrounding evidence what exactly happened. Nonetheless, Kyle Korver talks about this. He says that when he heard that Russell Westbrook Westbrook and a fan exchanged words during a game, his initial reaction was, you know Russell Westbrook, he gets into it with the crowd a lot. And then the full story came out later. What happened was that a fan had said some really ugly things at close range to Westbrook. Westbrook had responded. After the game, he said he'd felt the comments were racially charged. The incident struck a nerve with our team is what Kyle Korver writes. In a closed-door meeting with the president of the Jazz the next day, my teammates shared stories of similar experiences they'd had, a feeling degraded in ways that went beyond acceptable heckling. One teammate talked about how his mom had called him right after the game, concerned for his safety in Salt Lake City. One teammate said the night felt like being in a zoo. One of the guys in the meeting was Thabo. 
my teammate in Utah now, I looked over at him and remembered his night in New York City. Everyone was upset. I was upset and embarrassed too. But there was another emotion in the room that day, one that was harder to put a finger on. It was almost like disappointment mixed with exhaustion. Guys were just sick and tired of it all. He said, this wasn't the first time they'd taken part in conversations about race in their NBA careers. It wasn't the first time they'd had to address the hateful actions of others. And one big thing that got brought up a lot in the meetings was how incidents like this, they weren't only about the people directly involved. They weren't about Russ and some heckler. It was about more than that. It was about what it means to exist right now as a person of color in a mostly white space. It was about racism in America. He says, before the meeting ended, I joined the team's demand for a swift response and a promise from the Jazz organization that it would address the concerns we had. So here is the question, the first question. When he says that this was about racism in America, when there's a racist person who yells something at a player at a basketball game and then is ejected for the rest of the season, is that about racism in America? Or is it about a guy being a jackass? 